it is my immense pleasure and my honor to welcome all of you here all the dignitaries who have come far away especially to make this event a very successful I would like to invite Professor Hugh Fang to deliver the keynote of address. Professor Hugh Fang is a distinguished professor in the Department of Education at the Abraham St. Filter College of Education and School of Criminal Justice. And Charles is her student. They will deliver the keynote address on bridging the gender gap in them fails please put your hands together for them even though they are thank already you. here <laughs> thank you thank very you, much my name is angie sue um and i'm a professor at fishler college of education at nova southeastern university i'm actually a math professor and um but my research area is uh in a lot of area so the <laughs> So this, this uh, project that we are working on, we have been working on it for the last five years. We started uh, with uh, middle school students and then move on out each year to increase um, the possibly including more females. First, we started with minority females and then now we're moving into just female students. And I like to engage them in the 10th and the 11th grade so that when they apply to college, they would consider going into the STEM field. And then uh, because all these years we've been um, <clears throat> bringing um, content experts to do workshops for these girls. And I thought we need to uh, change the intervention a little bit so that we can get better results getting more female into the field, and so on, hence the mentorship. So today's talk is going to be focusing on how Charlie, as a mentor, for example, she is only two years older than the students that we work uh, with, and how she was able to inspire and impact these students. Okay, so our abstract, of course, is to empower these female uh, students through the activities that we provide um, in their classrooms. Last year, we really didn't have very good results because the time frame that we were giving at the school um, was not the, the right time. It was maybe 30 minutes before they are um, supposed to go home or we were in a cafeteria where there's a lot of traffic and noise. So we didn't get the results we want. So this year we told our partner high school to say we need an individual room, individual area, and we need to have uh, these sessions during the school hours, um, during their science classes. So what a wonderful result we have. The underrepresentation of females 
um, in the STEM is a concern actually for many, many years. And um, I'm looking at the information I'm reading and thinking it's not just the underrepresented females, it's actually female students. You know, they can be any race, uh, any background. Uh, getting them into the STEM field is a chore, actually. It's a huge task. So let's, so here I would like to introduce actually Charlie, who was a marine uh, biology major. And then her passion, she's telling me that my passion is teaching. I want to widespread what I know in science to the elementary age students. And then through this project, I'm going to let her tell you later um, how she changed her own thinking after the intervention and so on. So we wanted to. Um, Enhance critical thinking, problem solving, confidence, motivation, and achievement in school-based uh, curriculum and so on. We actually um, help design and create uh, these activities in the schools for the students. Um, the reason why we brought these female research assistants on board, Charlie it's not the only one, we had about six of them. We want to provide this diverse perspective and they see that, oh, these mentors are only two years older than me. If she can do it, we can do it and so on. And they feel very comfortable talking to students about their age, sharing information and so on. So they were quite motivating to these students. All right, so then I'm going to let Charlie talk about her experience in the in the classrooms. Hey everyone, like Dr. Sue said, um, on this project I served as a student back for. So this was an incredible experience and my main goal was just to assist the professors a lot of the time for the interventions. So anything they needed I would walk around um, to the students and see if they needed help with the interventions themselves. But I also served as a mentor um, for moving on in um, aspiring college students in general. So they were allowed to ask me any questions, whether it be about what I'm pursuing specifically about our campus, college life, you know, I'm just kind of fostering that relationship to where they would feel comfortable, you know, asking me about my experience in hopes that it would inspire them to pursue um, a similar path. So like Dr. Sue mentioned, there was only like a two to three year age gap between me and students, which provided a really great opportunity there. We had a lot of similar interests and bonds, although we're at different stages of life. Which ultimately, throughout the whole um, process, we had a really close relationship by the end of it. So that, um, and that had a big effect on me as well. So going into this project, I most of my work is focused on elementary age students. But working with these older high school students, it really inspired me to see the, you know, the specific content you could teach them, how excited they are to move forward because they're kind of at a transition period of their life and. I kind of made that difference in that. But now I'm kind of shifting my gear, my focus. And I also want to pursue um, secondary education now. So I hope to have inspired these students just the same way that they have inspired me throughout this whole mentorship process. Thank you, Charlie. Charlie is actually a star student. Not only she's a, a, a presidential scholar, she's, she's also on a full scholarship through the Razor's Edge program. And now she's in the Fischl Academy, which I'm wearing a shirt. Fischl Academy, these uh, students are cream of the crop from the country, all over the country. Um, they're top in their class, and when I'm with them, you can hear all they talk about is grad school, you know, academics, what books they read, <laughs> what courses to take. I was very impressed with this group of students. And um, they have a great future in front of them. Um, and uh, I think Charlie also wants to share what she did, actually. Uh, I'm going to give her a few minutes to talk about the workshop she did. Actually, this is the first time we had any students uh, did any workshop for this group of um, students. Go ahead, Charlie. Throughout this project, we had around seven interventions. So and these were basically workshops that were to inspire and teach these students about different areas of STEM. So they ranged from biological sciences to engineering and technology, chemistry, 
um, pretty much anything that would fall under the umbrella of STEM. So coming from my background in marine biology and environmental sciences, it was very important to me that I got to share my passion for that with the students. So with the way the lineup fell, I was one of the last interventions. So I really wanted to pick something that would encompass everything the students have learned so far, kind of have a little something for everybody to, in hopes that they would get interested in the topic. Uh, as we know, we come from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, so we are right by the ocean. It's the perfect opportunity to inspire these students to have a passion for the environment. And with that, I chose a squid dissection. So through this, it was a very hands-on experience. Every student got their own squid. Uh, it involved all areas of STEM. So it was biological sciences. They got to dissect it, look at the anatomy and physiology of the squid. Uh, there was even some art. So the quote-unquote backbone of the squid, they got to take it out and you dip it in the ink sack of the squid and draw with it. The students got to use math and measure the dimensions of the squid. So I kind of, I tried to pick something that would focus on every single aspect to inspire all students. And this was a very rewarding experience. Uh, I have used my worried bio background in a bunch of different areas, but never in a traditional high school setting. And you could just see that some of these students, although we live so close to the beach, have never been exposed to this kind of science before. And it was really great to see them testing out the waters, asking those questions, and for me to be able to help them. So it was a really rewarding experience. All right, so I'm happy to report through the mentorship um, intervention, our result this year is wonderful. Uh, we see an increase in uh, wanting to go into the STEM field uh, versus last year what we had. Um, we had no change last year. <laughs> this year we could see, you know, the girls are trying to go into the STEM field. There's another variable too, they, they're much older and they are ready to go into college. So that could be another factor that we look into. Um, so um, if you have any questions. So I, I'm on the board for, uh, we call it peak step. And we have girls between the age of yeah. 8 and 18. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a great idea because a lot of times it's adults leading these activities that share the importance of having that mentorship and giving them inspiration that, oh, yes, I can do this, this she can do it. So I wanted to uh, just acknowledge you. And, well, thank you. And to all the work you're doing. Um, we were very impressed with the mentors that we selected. Um, these are all girls who have a lot of um, ambition, wanted to do big things after they graduate. So I said to Charlie, are you sure you want to be a teacher? There's no money. And then she goes, I am following my passion. I want to do what I want to do and to make a difference, inspiring all the the students and all the children in the world. I said, wow, that's very noble. <laughs> you make a really good teacher, you know, because that's what it takes, you know, the passion and what you really truly enjoy doing. Any other questions? Uh, a singular type of studies that we are doing in our university, very soon was the band book. In the realm of the math education, we call it as the National Literacy Program. It's a very, very important life speed. Yes. What we have done a similar project, we have taken students of the undergraduate study and we have out 10,000 of them. Wow. So that we take them all across the country so that they all come from different parts of the state, of the country, India. So they are able to disseminate information. And one of the best feedback from the, uh, the mentors, they say, they prepare more, they learn more, but there's more active learning and that is going to disseminate the information. So they get a little more focused in the studies, they get uh, the content uh, expertise mm -hmm. and more importantly, they create the confidence and communication skills uh -huh. to reach across. That's wonderful. That's why I'm at this conference so we can collaborate. I'm looking forward to international collaboration. I actually collaborate with a professor from Sri Lanka years ago in, on a math project, it, that went so well. 
Um, so I'm looking forward to more collaborations with any of you from any part of the world. And we, we hope to widespread these, um, the model and the examples of what we did and so on. And the next award goes to Professor Angie Sue. The next award goes to Charlie Mushikaski. All right, Charlie, so please tell us what was your experience here at GRC 2024 at Oxford, and what was your greatest takeaway? Um, it was, it's was it been an amazing experience for me. This has been my first research conference, and I couldn't have asked for a better experience. Everybody was so warm and welcoming, and my biggest takeaway, it was just so great to see everybody with such diverse perspectives, but all working towards the same goal. I think I saw new levels of collaboration I never expected, and it gives me a lot of hope for making change in the future. That's awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.